Hey guys, it's Sodi here. Welcome back to another video. Thank you, Yuki. Sorry, you can't see the birds in this video. They are in their cage because it is their bedtime now. But today I wanted to kind of make a part two or I don't know, update video on one of my other videos because I made a video a few months ago called The Truth About Morphed Axolotls where I talked about how axolotls aren't really supposed to morph and are usually only morphed because people force them to do it through harmful experiments and dangerous ways which usually leads to death or shortened lifespans and I suggest you watch that video first to get the whole context of that because I did go into detail about why you shouldn't force your axolotl to morph and what happens if you do um, and how it's a really horrible experience for an animal to go through and is considered animal cruelty if it's been forced to do it. But there were a few things in the video that I said that wasn't correct. I definitely worded some things in the wrong way and I got a few really nice comments from people who just kindly let me know that I did get a couple things wrong and I really appreciate those comments because that made me look into it more and I've been wanting to make this video for a really long time. I'm sorry it took me so long. I, at first I didn't think it was necessary until I realized that that video got a lot of views, it has over 300,000 views, so I felt it was necessary for me to make a part two to talk about some things that I didn't clarify enough in that video. Because I don't want anyone to get the wrong idea, and I do see a lot of people assume that anyone who owns a morphed axolotl did it on purpose, and, you know, made them morph on purpose, something like that. So yeah, I did some more research, and I discovered a lot of things that I didn't realize when I made that video, because it's actually quite hard to find a lot of good information about morphed axolotls. Um, it is quite difficult. My last video, it does still have good information about that force their axolotls to morph and the consequences of that. That info still stands, but I did miss the point where I should have talked about that's not always the case. It can happen naturally sometimes, and I didn't really realize it was that common. Well, it's still not very common, but it can happen, and I should have talked about that in the video, but we're doing it now because I don't want people to assume that anyone who has a morphed axolotl has forced it to morph because it's definitely not the case. And I have actually seen uh, recently a couple of like bigger channels talk about um, getting a morphed axolotl and there's always a lot of comments on it making a lot of assumptions. So I don't want people to make the assumptions because of my video, you know? There's not a lot of info about morphed axolotls online. Basically, the only thing I found is this article about a study that was done in the 1960s. It's a really great article. It has some really fascinating stuff on there. If you guys want to check it out, I'm going to put it in the link down below uh, because there's a lot on there. I'm not going to go through like the whole article or anything because that just seems a bit pointless. But I'm going to go through some key points that I found on that article. There was a study done to see if axolotls could breed with tiger salamanders. In case you are unaware, and in case you didn't watch my other axolotl morphing video, I will quickly go over that axolotls basically are an extremely endangered species in the wild. There is about a thousand or less left, but they don't know an exact number. And they're only found in one lake in Mexico called this name, which I don't know how to pronounce, so I'm going to not say because I don't want to pronounce it wrong, but they're only found in this lake uh, in Mexico and sadly there's not much left in the wild. This is due to pollution, uh, invasive species, and habitat loss. But a long time ago, when they were a bit more common, they were very heavily researched and experimented on, which I know is sad, but unfortunately that's just what they have to do to learn what we know about animals. They do do scientific experiments on them. Uh, and there's not really much we can do about that. And axolotls are just such fascinating and unique animals. But basically, in the wild, the only type of axolotl you can find are wild-type axolotls, which are the dark black-type axolotls. But back then, in the 1960s, was when they were experimenting with breeding of axolotls, and they started to try breeding axolotls with tiger salamanders. Now, tiger salamanders and axolotls are quite similar, um, tiger salamanders look pretty similar to axolotls when they are in their larvae stage. Metamorphosis. Metamorphosis. That's how I say it. I feel very dumb. So tiger salamanders go through metamorphosis, which is basically when they lose their gills and they come out and breathe on land. This is something that axolotls originally didn't go through. A true wild axolotl does not go through metamorphosis. They spend their whole life in their larvae stage, which I feel like is kind of incorrect terminology because technically they're 
larvae stage is also their adult stage. So they just kind of spend their whole life looking like a salamander larvae, but they're just an adult axolotl, you know? So as you know, now we have all kinds of types of morphs axolotl, which is another term for basically different colors of axolotls, I guess. We can get albinos, we can get leucistic, and a lot more. <laughs> I can't even think of all the names now. There's a lot of different types of axolotl morphs out there. From what I understand, they have never found an albino axolotl in the wild before. There could be a chance maybe there has been a true wild albino axolotl because it does happen randomly in nature sometimes, but we don't know that for sure. But to get the albino and leucistic axolotls that we have in captivity, they were bred with tiger salamanders. Now from what I understand in this article, they did start off trying to have an axolotl and a tiger salamander to mate together, and this did create eggs, however all of those eggs didn't survive. So the way they actually successfully created an axolotl and tiger salamander hybrid is by manually doing microsurgery on the embryos and doing a cell nuclear transfer which is kind of crazy when you think about it doing surgery on a tiny little embryo that can't even feel anything yet by the way so it does not hurt the baby at all it's the same thing with like firefly axolotls are created by doing microsurgery on the embryos they don't actually feel it at all, but that is how they created albino and leucistic axolotls. So that means that basically most of the axolotls that we have in captivity now are actually kind of tiger salamander hybrids. I assume there's a higher chance of a wild type axolotl being a true axolotl, but honestly who knows? Maybe Toothless has some tiger salamander genes in her. Maybe she'll morph one day. <gasps> no, she won't. She's she's too old for that. She's an old lady. So it's kind of not that crazy when you think about it that sometimes they might just have that gene in them to morph like a tiger salamander. Now keep in mind this is very rare to happen naturally. It is very unlikely that this will happen to your axolotl, but it does happen. And it has actually happened quite a bit more than you would expect. It's kind of amazing when you think about it. Like as much as obviously like Experiments can be very harmful to the animals, but we wouldn't have the amount of axolotls that we have in captivity today if it wasn't for those experiments. So although there are bad reasons an axolotl can morph, like being in poor water conditions or people who manually force their axolotl to morph, there are rare occasions where an axolotl can just morph for no reason. But you shouldn't worry too much. I know I got some comments last time like who were like, I don't know if I want to get an axolotl now in case it morphs, because a morphed axolotl is a bit more work than a, a non-morphed axolotl. And I'm like, don't worry guys, this probably will not happen to you. It doesn't happen very often. It's just something that's fascinating that can happen sometimes. And also, so if an axolotl morphs um, due to bad health conditions or due to people forcing it to morph, they don't tend to live very long. They only live about a year afterwards. However, if an axolotl morphs naturally, they tend to live their normal lifespan. This can also be an age thing sometimes. They have to morph at a certain age and then they can still live their full lifespan. If you think that your axolotl is morphing, it's more than likely that your axolotl might be sick in some other way. The first thing an axolotl morphing will do is start to lose their gills, but this can also happen with a sick axolotl. The first thing you should do is make sure that your water parameters are good, because if your tank cycle is crashed and there's ammonia in there, their gills will start to shrink and burn off. But if there's nothing wrong there and your exo is still losing their gills and their body shape is changing, they may be morphing. They need to have semi-aquatic setups, half land and half water, because they could drown if you don't have a land area since they lost their gills. They definitely seem like they're a lot more work. Now I don't own a morphed axolotl, so I can't talk on experience. I just have a normal axolotl. <laughs> but if you do want to own a morphed axolotl, just get a tiger salamander. It's basically the same thing. So yeah, I really hope this video was better and I explained things better because I really do apologize that I gave the idea in my last video that people couldn't have naturally morphed axolotls. I'm sure I did mention that they could, but I don't think I... I don't think I worded it very well. You know, and I hope this video could do justice of talking about the fact that that does happen uh, and I do want to say guys like if you do see someone with a morphed axolotl please don't assume they forced it to morph because that's usually not the case because a lot of the time it's people that just have like rescue morphed axolotls or something 
um, or they just have not axolol that morphed, you know? Because usually people that do try to force their axolols to morph, the axolol usually dies. It doesn't usually survive. It's actually a very difficult thing to do. I don't know why people do it, but, you know, humans are weird, I guess. But yeah, most of the time axolols do not survive being forced to morph. And most people that I've seen online anyway have, like, rescue morphed axolols, so please don't assume that they are abusing their axolotl or something okay because it's usually not the case and I've just seen that a lot and I just I hope that wasn't my influence <laughs> because that was definitely not my intention to say that everyone who owns a morphed axolotl has forced it to happen yeah um <laughs> I hope this video was helpful and I uh, hope you guys can forgive me <laughs> if that annoyed you in my last video because I yeah, I truly didn't mean any ill intent. I just clearly didn't educate myself properly on the subject. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for watching this video. Really hope it could be informative for you guys. I'll leave that link of this article down below if you want to read more into it because it is really fascinating. Some of it's a little bit hard to understand, but it is really fascinating, honestly. Uh, Exiles are just such cool little creatures. And yeah, so thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Bye!